In Watts, one of the oldest buildings in the neighborhood is one of the only to survive on Charcoal Alley, a stretch of 103rd Street that was devastated during the Watts Rebellion in 1965. Today we're talking about the Watts Station, a Pacific Electric Rail station that operated for over 50 years. But what's the significance of this station anyway? And what does it represent for Watts today? Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the South LA Recap. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to learn more about South LA on the regular. In this episode, I partnered with blogger Aton Does LA to really dig into the story and history and impact behind this historic landmark. So Aton, take it from here. Just a few blocks north of the Watts Towers is another local landmark that might not get the same attention as Simon Rodia's folk art masterwork, but it is just as important to the history of Watts. I'm talking about the Watts Station. For over half a century, this humble railway depot hosted freight trains and local passengers waiting to catch the Pacific Electric big red cars that used to go everywhere in Los Angeles. Completed in 1904, the Watts Station signified Watts' transition from undeveloped farmland to an incorporated city. Like so many communities that sprouted up around Los Angeles around the turn of the century, Watts was built on the rail industry. The railway made it possible for Angelinos to live far away from downtown LA. Watts real estate ads from around the time advertised lots for a dollar down and a dollar a week that were 15 minutes from the center of town and a step off the Long Beach line. At the same time, Pacific Electric was one of the earliest employers of early Watts residents. They owned company homes there, so workers laying track for the railroad lines or the streetcar lines could stay in Watts with their families until they were able to afford their own homes. The Watts Station was the first important building in Watts's commercial center, Main Street, now known as 103rd Street. The original building was an eclectic mashup of architectural styles. It had a Victorian style roof line. You could see craftsman details in the wide eaves and the exposed rafter beams. There were even some reminders of old colonial buildings in the Grecian columns that supported the portico that served as the waiting area. The station has undergone some alterations over the years, so photos from the 60s uh, show the columns removed and the open portico closed up. Pacific Electric discontinued the Watts station in 1959, and the rest of the red cars were gone by 1961. It was the end of the lengthy first chapter of the Watts station but its history was far from over. In August of 1965, Watts residents revolted against an act of police brutality that tipped the inequities of segregation and lack of resources in the historic neighborhood. After six days of unrest, over 34 lives were lost and more than 600 businesses were destroyed, resulting in more than $40 million in damages. 103rd Street between Compton and Wilmington Avenues, which is Watts' main commercial corridor, was hit the hardest during the revolt, and this section of that street became known as Charcoal Alley because of the damage that the street endured. In the aftermath of the revolt, the Watts station was documented as one of the last standing buildings on that stretch of 103rd Street. In response to the rebellion, the United States federal government set aside over $4.6 million to implement the redevelopment of the neighborhood, while the Los Angeles City Planning Department planned a renaissance for the community. The LA City Planning Department collaborated with the Watt Citizen Advisory Committee to call for more retail and professional establishments in the neighborhood. A shopping center with anchor stores, grocery stores, and government buildings were among the planned sites for Watts' new Civic Center while also preserving the historic Watts Station along the corridor. In 
1967, Los Angeles City Planning developed plans to turn the Watts Station into a community exhibit and information center. However, the Watts Station stood vacant for years until the Community Redevelopment Agency spent $700,000 to restore it in the 80s. It reopened in 1989 as a branch office of the LA Department of Water and Power, with plans for a Watts History Museum folded inside, though a longtime resident tells us that the museum never opened. The Los Angeles County Metropolitan Transportation Authority opened a Metro Blue Line platform right next to the station in 1990, right along the route that the Pacific Electric cars used to take. I love the idea that over a century after it first opened, the watch station is still the first thing that greets travelers as they step off the rail car and begin to explore Watts. The watch station stands as a relic that has endured the birth of a city, the pain of segregation, and the long-standing promise of redevelopment. Today, the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power has announced plans to relocate its customer service center from Watts train station to a site across the street in the Martin Luther King Jr. shopping center. While the next set of plans for the station aren't immediately evident, the history behind the site shows that there's nothing it can't endure. That's all for this episode of The Recap, and I hope that you guys learned something new today. And special thanks to Aton Does LA for shining light on this historic monument. And if you guys have anything to add about the Watch train station or want to share your own experience about it, leave it down in the comment section below, and I'll catch you guys around on The Recap.